We want to welcome you this day as we commemorate the 20th anniversary of 9-11. I'm Pastor Phil Christ, the lead pastor of Lakeside Assembly of God. And it is my privilege today to be able to welcome you as we honor with our memories uh, those who have sacrificed their lives those who have faithfully served, those who have paid the ultimate price in so many ways. Again, as you've come apart from either work or leisure, and you are standing here on these hallowed grounds, uh, we thank you and we thank the leadership of Shelby Township that is well represented here today. Our township supervisor, Richard Stathicus, our treasurer, James Carabelli, uh, I note uh, our trustee, John Vermeulen, here today, our clerk, Stan Grote, our chief of police, uh, Robert Shalide, and our first responders, law enforcement that are well represented here today uh, make sure that uh, after this ceremony you have the opportunity to be able to thank them and appreciate them for their service to our community but uh, without you here uh, we could not have this ceremony and again we want to thank you at this time, I want to introduce to you the chairman of our Shelby Township Veterans Committee. Uh, he is no ordinary person, as many are well aware. Uh, he has been awarded two Purple Hearts. He is Shelby Township's 2020 Veteran of the Year. Would you show your appreciation to someone that makes this all come together? Our own Shelby Township, Phil Randazzo. Thank you, everybody. And uh, welcome. We got a beautiful day today. And uh, we'll start it out by placing the wreath. If I can have the chiefs up here, police chief and fire chief. Mr. Shalai and Mr. Champagne. Thank you, Chiefs. That's a, that's a great honor to place that wreath with you assisting along. Right now, we're going to have the national anthem sung. And uh, Jillian is a super girl here. So let's give a big round of applause. Jillian Steck, please. <laughs> Present arms. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly 
pledge salute, we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order arms. Thank you, Julian. Thank you very much. If you want to applaud, go ahead, please. Okay, we're going to have Pastor Chris up once again. Dr. Phil Chris, please. Let us pray. Lord, we invite you to be here among us at this 9-11 20th anniversary ceremony. Help us to honor the memory of the 2,753 who perished at the Twin Towers. Help us to honor the memory of the 184 who were killed at the Pentagon. Help us to honor the memory of the 93 passengers and crew members of United Airlines Flight 40 who gave their lives in a Pennsylvania farm field that others might live. Help us to honor the memory of the 403 law enforcement and first responder personnel who heroically saved lives only to sacrificially give their own. Help us to honor the memory of the more than 7,000 members of our military who have paid the ultimate price fighting a 20-year war on terrorism that we might be safe, that we might be free. Lord, today, help us to remember. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay, now at this time, I'd like to introduce retired fire chief, Chaplain Ray Ahonan, please. Would you step up and say some kind words? Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's hard to believe that 20 years have gone by. Yeah. A journey, the journey here, the journey to work, the journey to Meyer or wherever we go, or the journey up the steps and the towers started with just a step, but they took the step. They took the step because they took the oath. And basically, we believe the job description basically said all duties as assigned, and there are many here that can identify with that. They served without hesitation or reservation, and they paid the ultimate price, never knowing that day. However, they left their loved ones. Have you told your loved ones how you feel, that they would not be returning home? As many of you, right, as most of you, we saw what happened. I was on duty uh, as a fire chief, and we were speechless and then we realized what was happening. And of course, um, being a public safety servants, dedicated, committed, they wanted to self-dispatch. I'm sure there are many of you here that can reflect with that. I, I wanna go, I need to go, yeah. I need to go. Candidly, one of my uh, firefighters went uh, from Macomb Township and I never asked him what he did. And eight years later at his retirement party, he pulled me aside and said, Chief, you wanna know what I did? And I said, only if you want to tell me and he started to sob and he said, I never wished I should have gone. I, I should have never gone. I hugged him and I thanked him for his service. Ladies and gentlemen, do we know why there's patriotism? Because there's patriots. If we don't have patriots, we will have no patriotism. Let's show some love for our veterans who are here today and those yeah. that will be watching by camera. Let's show some yeah. love. I am concerned, this is my opinion, that 20 years later and some walk among us that have forgotten. They do not understand what it takes to run, to keep a society free, to keep our sovereignty as the United States of America. 
I am for patriots. I am for first responders. I am for those who take their oath and who serve. And I hope you believe the same way. I'm not ashamed to be a patriot. I, I'm just not ashamed. And we know today that patriots can be um, a challenge when they're out in public. I urge you to wear the flag uh, at lapel pin. I urge you to wear the t-shirt. I urge you to say thank you to a veteran, to a public safety official. I urge you, I will tell you briefly, and my favorite grounds for doing this happen to be at Costco and Meyer and Hall Road. If a veteran chooses to identify themselves, did you catch that? If a veteran chooses to identify themselves, and sometimes candidly, respectfully, they do not want to identify themselves, I'm okay with that. Most of the time, I will engage them. I leave there being rewarded. It, it, it's overwhelming. Some of the stories, submarine duty, uh, Patton's assistant driver, um, uh, uh, flight crews, uh, top secret stuff. Uh, if, if they didn't choose to be identified and I didn't choose to engage, that story would have never been told. But just here today as an example, I can share with you that story. Patriots walk among us, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. Sometimes they've taken an oath, sometimes they've not. They're just normal Americans. How about some love for some normal Americans, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed to be a citizen of the United States. I am not ashamed of that. I am grateful for the men and women who have suffered horrific losses physically, mentally, and emotionally. They chose to serve so that you and I can stand here and proudly proclaim freedom. We are grateful to be United States citizens. What are some character traits of first responders? Gratitude, sincerity, meekness, not to the point of rolling over, but meekness meaning humble in heart and humble in spirit. Be nice, be grateful, be generous. I know we're all blessed. I would submit to you that the blessing upon a blessing is for whatever you're given is to share the blessing. Yes. Share the blessing. Thank a veteran. Thank a public safety a servant. Remember, remember, remember those that paid the ultimate price 20 years ago. Coincidentally, ladies and gentlemen, a little side note, I filled up my tank in the township today. Always happy to pay my gas tax here in the township. And I clicked the mileage to empty. Do you know what it read? 343. That's the amount of New York City firefighters that perished that day 20 years ago. Perhaps a strange coincidence. I'm so honored to be in front of you. I do not take this privilege of wearing the uniform lightly. Please know how much your chaplain cares about each of you, your families, Shelby Township, Michigan, Macomb County, Michigan, and the greatest country that he, the Christ, ever made, the United States of America. Keep serving, keep being grateful. Thank you. Once again, we're going to bring up Dr. Christ to say some kind words. Thank you. Chaplain, I enjoyed that. Right on. I want you to speak at my church. Please. I so enjoyed that. And if I can give a plug right now on September, Sunday, September the 26th, we are going to be especially honoring all of our veterans, uh, all of our law enforcement, fire, first responders on that Sunday. Uh, Richard Stathicus will be speaking, uh, uh, Robert Shalide uh, will be uh, honored speaking, Phil Randazzo will be there, and we as a congregation, community, would like to really honor uh, those who faithfully serve and have served. Let us pray a word of blessing. Lord, we now pray your comfort and peace upon spouses, parents, children who never saw their loved one again after 9-11. We pray your comfort, your peace upon our veterans who in the 20-year war on terror returned home without a limb or terribly burned 
or injured physically or psychologically. We speak your peace that passes all understanding upon the loved ones of our first responders, law enforcement and veterans who at this 20th anniversary are reliving the loss of their loved one who never ever came home. But we give thanks for their legacy of faithful service and we are thankful for our Savior Jesus who paid the price for our sins and conquered death that we might live eternally. We have the hope that there will be a glad reunion on that day of day in the skies so that it doesn't have to be goodbye but I'll see you in the morning. We speak these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray this peace. And everyone would say, Amen. Amen. Very, very, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor, once again. Um, before I go any further, uh, I'm going to talk to everybody as... Um, I usually don't do this at any any uh, ceremonies that I attend, but um, the way the outcome came of Afghanistan, uh, I want the American people to know. A lot of people are worried about that, very concerned about the Taliban and ISIS and all the rest of them kids over there. They just don't know. And luckily, they are where they are at today, sitting on a runway. Uh, when I was in the jungles of Vietnam in the recon unit, I was a scout. I crawled the tunnels of Vietnam. I chased Charlie all over the place. I never seen base camps. I lived in the jungles, us guys. These are the ones that you don't see on TV, in the commercials. You don't see none of these guys. The ones with me, they're either dead or they wish they were dead. They're blown apart so much. And we lose guys, but I'll tell you one thing. We pulled out of Vietnam, but every fight that we were in, every battle that we were in, we won. We never lost a battle to the Viet Cong, to the North Vietnamese, or the Chinese. They were in there also. We held our grounds for hours and hours. Wounded don't get dusted off. Not until the battles are over. These are things that they don't normally say in public. You don't see them in the movies because it's really, really dirty game. The men that are fighting are dirty guys. The Americans are very, very dirty when you get them ticked off. Don't get them ticked off. I hope the, uh, the Taliban man can hear this. That you guys are very lucky. Mess with us one more time, and I know the divisions, the units that will be going there, and everything will be destroyed. That's how we played that game in Vietnam. I'm standing here today, very luckily, only survivor of my platoon, the first day of the Tet Offensive. We had the offensive. I fought at Tonsonu Air Base. That was three days. It was over 2,000 NVA and Chinese hit us. Caught us between the barbed wire and the village. But we couldn't get inside the air base. They hit our tracks, our lead tank with RPGs. We're all laying in the ditch fighting. Everybody continually dying all this 10 and a half hours. There's no choppers, there's nothing coming in. We're 911, we're everything. And we defeated them. We defeated the thousands, and they took us into Saigon from that point. We were reinforced by Bravo and Alpha Troopa. I was with Charlie Troop. They re reinforced us. We went into Saigon, and the NVA thought they were going to take over the embassy. Well, they tried, and my track, APC, was ordered to, to, on the front porch of that embassy. I opened up the door. My lieutenant says, Lieutenant Pitto, he says, open up the door, Wop. I'm, I'm sorry, we had nicknames, okay? I'm sorry, I'm sorry I said that. 
but uh, there's no reflection upon uh, any of the Italians out there, please. Uh, we, yeah, like I said, we had nicknames. We, we can't talk on the radios with our names. But uh, we backed up to the door of that big embassy, like a White House. And two days we, set, we spent there fighting, inside and outside. And the colonel, a Marine colonel inside, wanted two volunteers. Pinto said, hey, Lungabardi, Randazzo, we'll get up here and go inside that uh, embassy. We went in there and he ordered us to sit down by this door. I was all bloody from the fighting in the previous days. My teeth are gone, metal sticking out of my head, my arms, my legs. We were all busted up. We sat by that door on the floor and he ordered us, nothing comes in and nothing goes out, you kill everything. The next morning he came down that hallway and we even told him to halt. He halted and we looked at him and then we says, proceed. He came down that hallway. He says, I'm going to open up this door. And he says, there's a man going to come out. I want your shoulder against his shoulder on both sides. So he was on this shoulder, on his left shoulder. And we walked him down out into the beautiful area of this embassy, over toward these big glass doors. You look out, you see beautiful landscape. And I was in the jungles for four and a half months before this happened. So I was completely out of my mind. And we walked him into these armored vehicles. And then he says, okay guys, go back to what you're doing. We went back out the front door, jumped back up on the track. And Pinto says, uh, what happened? I said, I don't know. We walked some guy in the backyard over there. And oh, the, the colonel did say, because of the trees, he did say, if anybody throws a hand grenade, you guys jump on it, lay flat on it. and." looked at him and said, we'll watch the branches and the leaves. Don't worry about us jumping on a hand grenade because there's nobody going to be throwing a hand grenade. We'll nail them before they even get ready to throw a hand grenade. That's how we were. That's the mindset we had. So the moral of this story is that when I came home, it wasn't too much after I came home, I seen in the newspapers, I seen on TV that, that man, and that was General Westmoreland. And I was kind of greatly honored. Longobardi, he was on the mortar track. The mortar track got hit with RPGs. There wasn't much left to him, just, just about that much. So when dust off come up, I put him on there. I survived a lot of battles, a lot of firefights, and a lot of guys dying. But for every one of us that die, every one of us that gets killed, we have to kill 10 of them. That's the law. We have separations by feet from the enemy, from anybody, I should say, civilians, anybody. It's five feet distance. Anything within five feet is gone. Same with vehicles. Nobody can come up to our vehicles, our APCs or 48 tanks. Nobody can cl come close to them. Otherwise, they're going to 50 feet. They're, and they're, they're going to disappear too. We did not play. We did not play. And Afghanistan would have been ours in about a day if they would have sent units like mine to some other units. It wouldn't last long but a day. And I wanted to get that off my chest because it ticks me off that them guys are boasting on TV with weapons they don't even know what to do with. And to, to me, I look at them and I tell my wife, you know, they're, they're just kids. That's all they are compared to units like mine. And them units weren't dispersed over there. So we really didn't have the dirty guys. But they, I don't know, that's why China stays where it's at and Russia stays where it's at. They know our guys from America. We have something to fight for. Them people don't have nothing to fight for. You have a house, you have a wife, you have kids, schools, whatever. You go out and go to Detroit Zoo. I mean, you got something here. Over there, they have nothing. And that's why the heart, the heart is in the American fighting man. So if the Taliban want to try something next time, there won't be no, no more next time for them. It, it, they'll be eliminated. I know, I know the army. I know the army as an intelligence reconnaissance scout. And I thank you all for listening to me. And uh, 
Thank you. Before we go any further here, I got Vinny over here. See him sitting there in a the chair? V Vincent lives right behind me. Now, he was in New York. He's a police officer in New York. He also was in the military. He didn't, he didn't have enough of New York. New York's tough enough without becoming a, a, a police officer, and then he's going to the military. But uh, I got Roger over here, I got Kenny over here, Vietnam veterans. These guys are in the jungle still. If you look at them, no, but they're young boys back then. They knew it, they know what to do with them weapons. The, the 60s, the 16s, AKs, if we get to take their what we run on ammunition, we take their dead ones, AKs, you know. I don't want to go into that one. But that's all I think I'm gonna say right now. So uh, what I'm gonna do is turn it back over to uh, Pastor Chris for the benediction. Now Lord, we speak blessing on these who have come this day. They've come apart, Lord, to honor the memory of those who have fallen, of those who have been found faithful in service. We're glad that on that day of days, we will hear the commendation, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. We pray now a blessing as we go. And Lord, continue to bless these hallowed grounds. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the name of Jesus, we pray this. Amen. Thank you once again. We're going to wait for Julian, our vocalist, plus our musician. And she's going to do a rendition of taps on the guitar. This is, this is really, really pretty. Siren salute right now from the Shelby Township Police Department, the Shelby Township Fire Department, and the EMS. Thank you everybody for coming out this beautiful day. The boys up there looking, and the girls, they're looking down on us for this nice weather. And I'd like to thank everybody that participated and uh, have a good day.